Hey, this is Dave from Unipro, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a Facebook group using some more advanced settings and strategies that are gonna help you to be able to monetize that Facebook group as soon as possible. So yes, this video is for business owners who wanna make money through their Facebook group. Let's dive in. So you've seen that Facebook groups are growing in popularity very quickly. In fact, Mark Zuckerberg has stated plainly that the future of the Facebook platform is all about groups. And so starting a group for you, it might be a great way to attract leads and nurture those leads, but you don't want to go down that path unless you know what you're doing. You don't want to spend a lot of time invested into a Facebook group unless it's going to turn into sales. Well, good news for you. In this video, I put together a list of the 10 most important features you need to be aware of, you need to consider when you're starting your own Facebook group. So let's take a look at those 10 features and we're gonna use some examples along the way. So to begin, the first three features are the ones that people see before they actually join your Facebook group. And these are really important because when someone gets a first glimpse of your Facebook group, these three features are either gonna turn them on or turn them off. So this is really gonna dictate how quickly or how slowly your Facebook group grows. The first feature is the name of your group. I'm gonna go over and you can see the name of one of my groups is called Audience and Influence, New Ways to Gain Massive Engagement on Facebook. Now, a lot of people will start a Facebook group and let's say it's a business group, they'll say something like Business Tips with Dave. Dave. And it's just not really an attractive name that will tell people why they should join. So notice how this is formatted. And I recommend you do the same for your group. First, there's the actual name of the group. The name is Audience and Influence. And then I use a little emoji here as a bit of a separator. And then this is the key piece. The key piece is what's in it for me. So someone who arrives at this group, they need to quickly understand what's in it for them. What will they get when they join this group? And in this case, they're going to get new ways to gain massive engagement on Facebook. So that's how you should format, how you should set up the name of your group. That's the first point we want to consider. And secondly, you want to consider the group cover photo. And over here, you can see the cover photo of the audience and influence group. We have a logo. It's um, a chat bubble that turns into a bit of a megaphone here, suggesting about gaining influence, gaining audience, which is what this group is all about. For your cover photo, you want to have two considerations. First off, you want it to look professional. You want people to see this and realize, oh, this group is run by a professional. I'll probably gain something from this group. And second, Secondly, you want it to stand out. Think about when Facebook recommends a group to someone or if someone searches on Facebook and they see a long list of all these different group options. You want your group to stand out and that's gonna be done by this image here. And so in our case, we chose a black background with a very simple logo in the middle that looks very different from all the other cover photos that are out there. So that's the second consideration. The third thing that people will see when they come to your group for the first time before they become a member is this. It's the about this group, it's the group description. Now, the group description, again, I really want to encourage you to think about the question, what's in it for me? When someone lands here for the very first time, they don't know anything about your group. Your group could have the best content ever inside, but this person doesn't know because they've never been inside. And so it's important that this description conveys what's in it for me. Why will this person's life or business or situation get better when they join your group? So those first three factors, the name of your group, the cover photo, and the description, those are the only things that someone will see before they join your group. So you wanna make sure you have these set up, always thinking about what's in it for me, for the end user. You wanna entice them to come and join your group. Now we wanna go over to your actual group settings. So I'm gonna click on manage and I'm gonna scroll down here and go to group settings. And you notice this is the place where you can actually create the name and description of your group. So if I click on edit, you'll see this is where I put in the name of the group. One note on this is you'll see that you can only change your na group's name once every 28 days. This is after you've um, started to accept new members. So once you start your group and people are in your group, you can't just change your name all the time. So make sure you have a name that you're really happy with. The description you can change as frequently as you like. And so there's where the description goes. So. That's already set for me, so I'm just gonna cancel that. Um, in terms of privacy, this is really important. It's very important that if you're looking to monetize your group, you have it set as private. Now, why is that? Private requires that someone request to join your group and then you accept them in. There's two reasons why this is super important. Number one is you want people to request to join showing that they're really interested. They have to jump through a hoop in order to get into the group. And this just gives them a little bit of ownership. They're actually, they have a little bit more skin in the game versus a public group. Anyone can look at the content anytime. We want people to have to take that step to show that they're actually interested. 
Secondly, this promotes better content within your group. I'm going to show you actually an example, and there's tons of examples of public groups. So in a public group, anyone can participate in the conversation. Anyone can see anything. You don't actually have to be a member of the group. And this is what tends to happen in public groups. You can see this group here. While it's got almost 14,000 members, this is supposed to be a social media group. And when we take a look at the content here, so a lot of dating posts, just random videos. It's a lot of spam, a lot of promotion. This isn't what you want if you're looking to monetize your group. So instead, we make it private so members have to request to join. And then once they're inside the group, they're part of a private discussion. So the chance of quality content is much higher. So it's important to make your group private. Moving on down the settings, the next setting that we want to look at here is the visibility. And this is important as well, is we want to have it set to visible. And here's why. While the group is private, and people have to request to join, we want it to be visible so that it comes up in Facebook search and so that Facebook can potentially suggest this to people who should request to join. If you have it set to hidden, then the only way that someone can find it is if you send the link to that person. And you don't want that. You want your group to be able to grow organically, so make sure that it's set to visible. Next, we want to talk about your customization here. So we're going to take a look at a few customization settings. Your web address, let me just click on the edit here and you'll see that this particular group someone can find by going to facebook.com slash group slash audience and influence. When you first launch your group, Facebook's going to assign it a number. Instead of a name, it's just going to be a number. And imagine this. This is why this is really important is we want to be able to speak where the group is and have someone be able to remember that very easily. So imagine, for example, I do a lot of podcasts. If I'm on a podcast and someone says the host asks me, where can people find out more about you? If I were to say, well, if they just go to Facebook slash group slash 012789 and give this long string of numbers, no one's going to remember that. Whereas when I set a custom web address, now I can tell people, well, just look in groups for audience and influence, audience and influence. And it's very easy for someone to remember that and take action on that. So you want to set your customized web address. Now, some of this other stuff you can take a look at and choose whatever settings you like. It's not as important, but there are some more important features for anyone who's looking to monetize your group. So let's take a look at those. Scrolling down here, I'm going to look at the added to group section. And so there's a bunch of different features that you can add to your group that can be really helpful. The one that I recommend is this one right here called guides. And the way that you get this is if you go to add new. And then there's going to be some opportunity for you to add these different features. And you can see down here, I've already added guides to my group. And I'll show you why this one's important. You can take a look at these other features, but for monetization, the guides one is most important. I'm going to go over to our group and I'm going to go into our discussion here. And you'll see at the top, there's this little button here that says guides. Guides is a way for you to store your best content that you want new users to find very easily. And so you can see in here, we have a guide for our live trainings. Now, why would you do this? Well, imagine that you became a new member of our group and you come into the discussion and you see there's all these posts and all this stuff going on and you really want to know, well, where, where are like the most important things? That's what the guides are for. And I'll tell you how powerful this is. Very regularly, I will get people who will message me and they'll say something along the lines of, Dave, I just binge watched all your trainings in the guide section and then they'll go on to ask a question or say that they need help or they suggest that they want to find out more information. But it's because everything was organized into this guide section. Now you can create as many guides as you like. I do recommend that you keep this as simple as possible. So in this particular group, we just have one guide section. If you have 20 guide sections, then it actually defeats the purpose. It becomes a little bit overwhelming. The purpose of the guides is to consolidate your best information, your best content, so that a new member can easily find it and so that they can binge on your best content as well. Now I'm going to go back to the settings and I do have, there are three more that I really want to draw your attention to. So I'm going to go to group settings and let's scroll down to the bottom again. And you'll see that there's a section right at the very end called apps. Now this may or may not be relevant to you right away, but this is certainly going to be relevant as you start to monetize your group and really uh, grow and nurture your lead. So I'm going to click on the edit button and you'll see that I've added two apps. I've added Restream.io and also Zoom. Why have I, I added these? Well, both of these are streaming apps that'll allow me to stream either through Restream or through Zoom directly into the group. 
If you're going to monetize your group, it's really important that you connect and you nurture your leads inside the group. How do you do that? The best way is by live video. It allows you to engage them. It allows you to interact with them. It allows you to build relationships with your group all at once. So you can connect with potentially thousands of people in a single video. Now you can use the native Facebook live feature to go live directly into your group, but there are features in Restream or Zoom that I like to use. It gives you more control over the live video stream that you're feeding into your group. Now, in order for you to use one of these apps, you need to add them. And so it's really easy to do. You can just click on add apps and it's going to come up with all the different apps that you can plug right into your group. And there are a lot of options. Again, there are many things that you may want to put into your group, but I recommend having at least one streaming app that gives you more control over the live feeds that you put into your group, aside from just using regular Facebook live. So all you need to do is go over to search and then you can search for any app you like and just simply add it to your group. So once you have that added, then you'll be able to use the power of those apps in conjunction with your group. It's amazing. There's so many options. So you can definitely go explore that. There are two more very, very important features or settings that I'd like to draw your attention to. I'm going to go back to manage. And this time I'm going to go over here and you'll see there's something called membership questions. And I'm sure you've encountered this before. When you go to join a group, you're asked questions before you're able to actually, your request to join the group actually goes through. And so in this case, Facebook, it allows us to have three questions. I like to use all three and it's really important that you do so strategically. So let me walk you through the psychology. There's actually a lot of psychology that goes into these three questions, why we have them set up the way that we do. So you'll notice the first question, it says required one out of three and it says, be honest, what's the current status of your engagement, your audience engagement on Facebook? Now, remember this group that I run here, audience and influence, it's all about engagement on Facebook, building a bigger audience. And so I want to know from people who are first joining the group, I want to know how are you doing in terms of what we talk about in this group? So let's say your group is a fitness group. You might want to ask how people are doing with their fitness. Maybe it's a sales group. You want to ask people how they're doing with their sales. The key here, the stra strategy here, the psychology here is that I want people who are coming into the group to do an honest assessment of where they're at in terms of Facebook engagement. And I'll tell you, most people, they will choose this. They will say, not great. I get the odd like and comment, but that's about it. What does this do? Well, it puts them in a psychological state of coming into this group, understanding that they have a problem. Very important because now they come in more receptive to looking for a solution. Speaking of which, that leads us into question number two. Notice I wrote required two out of three. We put together an in-depth training that shows how we get 100 to 200 new members into our Facebook group per week and for free. Want us to send it to you. So in question number one, this person admits, I've got a problem, which primes them to want a solution. Now I'm presenting them with a very juicy solution. Who wouldn't want to add 100 to 200 new members to their Facebook group for free? So almost everyone who says either, okay, I get some engagement or I'm not so great. They admit that they have a problem. Almost all of them say, yes, please send me this training. I need to know more. And now they're opening up an opportunity for me to actually offer them some help. Third question required three out of three. What is your best email address where we can connect you with our private trainings, tools, and resources? Now there's a psychological phenomenon known as escalating commitments. And simply what it means is when someone says yes to a small thing, they'll say yes to something that's slightly bigger. And then they'll say yes to something that's slightly bigger than that. That's exactly what we're doing here is we want people to say yes by answering this question, simply to answer the question. They're playing the game. They're saying, yes, I'll participate. Then we want them to say, yes, I want some help. I admitted I have a problem here. Yes, I want some help. Then when it comes to the third question, we say, hey, give us your email address. They'll say yes. They've already said yes once. They said yes twice. Now they'll say yes a third time by giving their email address. A lot of groups, they'll come right out of the gate and they'll say, what's your email address? And if you do that, you're making a mistake because you're asking a question that's requiring too much commitment too quickly. Instead, we want to escalate those yeses. And so these three questions, they gather a lot of information about new members who are requesting to join the group, but there's a problem with Facebook groups. And you may know this if you've ever run a Facebook group before. If you have these three questions and people start answering these questions and you start accepting these people into your Facebook group, their information goes away. Facebook does not store that data, which is a shame. You'll lose the email addresses. You'll lose the people who are saying, yes, I need help. 
So what do we do about that? Well, the old way that I used to do this is I paid a virtual assistant to go in and every day before accepting these people, they go and copy and paste their answers over into a spreadsheet, which was very time consuming and can get quite costly when you're paying a virtual assistant to do mundane tasks like this. And so instead of that, we've developed a way to do this automatically. Let me show you. We have a software called Unipro and one of the features of Unipro is it manages our group members. And I'll show you here what it does is I'm gonna click on manage and you'll see that it'll take me over to our audience and influence group. And this is where pending members would be. Now I just accepted all the new members so there aren't any members there. But when there are members who have requested to join, it'll show the answers that they provided to those three questions. And then there's simply a button from Unipro that says accept them. And when I accept them, it takes those people, their information over into a spreadsheet database that looks like this. And you can see as I scroll here, we've been collecting a lot of data on all our new members. It, re it remembers the person's name, it has their link to their Facebook profile, it has their answers to their questions, including their email addresses. And you can see as I scroll, I've got hundreds and hundreds of people. These are leads put into a spreadsheet. Now, what's really important about that is I have this column here that records, records everyone's email address. And I want their email address to go onto my email list so that I can nurture these people through email marketing. How do I do that? Well, I use a tool called Zapier. And Zapier is really cool. What it does is it just connects apps. And so in this case, I have it connecting this Google Sheet with the email software that I use to nurture these leads. And I use ClickFunnels. I use their email software built into the ClickFunnels software. And what that does is when someone joins our Facebook group, they're added to a list that I believe it's called new to Facebook group members or new members to Facebook group. And then from there, they receive, in our case, we send out five emails giving a ton of value, directing these people back to the Facebook group. So they start to consume content in the group. So the algorithm of the Facebook group starts showing more content to them. And so you can see how powerful this will be all from these membership questions. The 10th feature that we use that's really powerful in Facebook groups is actually just inside the group. It's a post inside the group. And let me show you, I'm gonna go over to inside the conversation of audience and influence, and we'll take a look at this particular post. This post is what we call a welcome post. And so it does just what it sounds like. It welcomes new members into the group. Now the strategy of the welcome post is really twofold, twofold, number one, is we wanna show what's in it for me again. We wanna show that there's gonna be value in this group. We want people to be excited to be part of this group. And so as you read through and you can go and join, I'll put a link in the notes below and you can come over and join Audience Influence. Come join this group and you can take a look at the copy, the sales copy that I use here that helps people understand all the value they're gonna get from this group. We're not hard selling anyone, we're giving a ton of value in this group. And so what does this do? It kind of lets people's guard down. They've probably been sold to a lot in other groups. And so we want them to know that's not gonna happen here. We also want them to know they're gonna get a ton of value. So that's number one. We want them to understand the value, what's in it for me. Number two, we wanna strike up engagement. We want people to engage on this post so that the Facebook algorithm sees they're interested in the content that's happening in this group so that they see more of our content. How do we do that? And I just wanna show you here, as I scroll through here, notice, let me just open up some more comments here. You're gonna notice that there's a ton of engagement on this post. And you can see all the people that are commenting. Actually, I'll scroll back up and we can see, uh, yeah, 747 comments. So a lot of people are commenting on this. Why is that? Well, number one, because we said, what's in it for you? We told them the value they're gonna get. But number two, we made sure that they saw this post. How did we do this? We did it right here and you can see this says, so this is a comment for me. It says, Lucy and I just wanted to say welcome and to let you know what this group is and isn't about. Please check out this post. Really happy to have you joining us. And then notice that all these people are tagged and then they start to respond and notice the response is grateful. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Generating a whole lot of rapport right off the bat. How did we do this? How do we tag all these people? Well, again, the old way was we used to pay a virtual assistant to literally go through and make a list of everyone who's new to the group and then at mention each individual person, which was ultra time consuming. Now we've automated this and I'll show you how we do it inside again, our software Unipro. What Unipro does is it creates lists of all of our new members and then we can use a tool. It's called tag for attention. And Tag for Attention allows us to go and choose a post. So in this case, I would just go and choose our welcome post. And then it allows us to choose a list of people. And you'll notice that there are some dates here. So for example, I made a list of people on May 30th. Unipro pulled this list of all new members for May 30th and then put them into a list. And so now I can tell Unipro, I wanna to go to this particular post. 
I want to take all of these people from this list and I want to tag them using this particular message. And so going back over here, you'll see this is the message that I used. So I said, I want to go to the welcome post. I want to use this message. And then I want to tag people who are new to the group on a certain date. Unipro goes and does it in about three seconds flat. It goes and does all the tagging. So now these people see this welcome post, they start to engage. And now we're really starting to build rapport with our new group members. And so those are the 10 features and settings. They are a little more advanced, but those are the ones that are gonna really help you grow and monetize your Facebook group. If you have any questions or comments about any of the strategies that I just shared, of course, leave those below. And if you found this to be helpful, of course, like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. Before you go, I've got one more video you're probably gonna to wanna to check out. So we'll see you there.